Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Miss Toto. Thank you guys for subscribing to my channel. And if you're new here, just make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Don't forget to like, comment, and um, share this video, of course, and also leave a comment below. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into this video. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions as far as how I grow my hair and I really didn't have like the, what do you say, the magic ingredients or magic go-to answers for it. So I really had to like sit down and think about it and just think over the past years that I've been natural, what I actually done to my hair to just keep it flourishing. So I'm just going to share some things um, with you guys, but I am going to do a disclaimer because, uh, yeah, as you know, I am not a hair guru, a hair doctor, a hair specialist any of that i'm just a girl who now knows how to care for her hair so um oh and i'm not a hair um educator or anything like that so i don't, I don't know anything about the you know the high porosities low porosities normal porosities or you know the cuticles or you know any of that i just know what works for my hair so if you're looking for a scientific method or some science behind what i'm going to tell you then you probably will want to check out some other videos as well on um as far as that um area of expertise because that is not my area so i'm gonna just tell you guys practically what I do for my hair and what has worked for me. So, if you wanna know all of that information, just keep on watching. Um, so, pretty much, I gathered some information of what I've done to my hair since I've been natural. Once I started to um, like search on YouTube like for how to care for your natural hair, all these, it was a few, it wasn't many back then, cause like I said, this was like 10 years ago. It was a few uh, natural hair girls that were on YouTube that was doing videos on how they care for their natural hair. And I'm like, I'm like, why their hair look different than mine? Like, I was, y'all, y'all, okay, 35 now. But yeah, back then, even being 25, I'm like, uh, <laughs> what is that? Like, are they mixed with something? Like, my mindset was completely uh, naive to what our hair can do. But anyway. So I'm looking and I'm like, wow, so they pretty much transitioned their hair, then big chop. Some people did the big chop um, and their hair grew out, you know, long, thick, healthy, natural, curly hair. And I'm like, oh my God. And then to find out it's like all these different textures of hair, it was even more amazing. So it made me curious, like, I wonder what my texture is. I wonder if my hair can grow that long. I wonder if my hair can grow that, you know, thick. I already knew with the relaxed hair, my hair was on the thicker side, but when I, when my mom was doing it, but when I started to take care of it, it just started to diminish real quickly. So it started to thin off, thin out, break off, and be damaged in areas that was beyond repair. So um, once I found these girls, I started to just continue to follow their their journey and then as they were following as i was following their journey i started my journey on my own and just started to like put more protective styles in my hair and then just see what my actual curl pattern looks like um once it did grow out so that is my first tip on growing natural hair is to find you somebody who is um an inspiration to inspiration to you like what are you looking for in your hair are you looking to uh, grow, for it to just be healthy and you're not worried about length or are you looking for it to be long and healthy are you looking for it to just um just to grow the color out are you not wanting to have straight hair anymore like what is your um overall goal for your hair and i believe if you have somebody that you can actually follow um, on YouTube where there's one two or three people I've had multiple people that I followed um, and what drew me to them was mainly their skin tone because I no lie I look for girls who look like me so I looked for brown girls with uh, thick hair <laughs> um, so I tried to and, and you know possibly could be my you know hair texture so I, I, uh, the main people that I did follow was of course natural 85 her channel um and just to watch her grow from where she was and where she is now like is amazing so natural 85 um i looked at chime i looked at uh beautiful brown baby doll i looked at chime or well, i said chime i looked at uh michi who's no longer here anymore then i started to look at her sister's channel miss bond 
Um, and also another girl named Dominique, and I believe she passed from lupus um, some years ago as well. So yeah, and her hair was like hip length in her hair. She always kept it for the most part like straight, but it was still natural, thick, long, healthy hair. So she was able to take care of her hair in that um, aspect. So yeah, I followed up quite a few, and that's probably not even all. I just can't think of everybody off the top of my head, but I followed quite a few girls on YouTube because they were inspiration, they were hairspiration, and they were motivation. I should put that on a t-shirt. But yeah, just find you somebody that, um, that inspires you to whatever your natural hair journey is then you you will have somebody like a point per, you will have a point person to you know almost help you keep yourself accountable and keep you motivated to keep going with this because it can be frustrating especially if you transitioning um and going through that middle stage of your hair where you don't know what to do with it or you can't put it in a ponytail you want to put a ponytail like you need somebody there that's pretty much going through or have gone through the same thing so that way you would know okay it takes time Okay, that's my first point, is to find you somebody that you can um, be inspired, or inspired off of, motivated off of, um, to do whatever your natural hair journey is. My, my motivation was to, or inspiration was to have my hair grow back natural, um, healthy, and long, with no chemicals. So my next point was to identify your hair. So once you you know have grown your hair out and or transitioned and now you understand what your hair type is, whether it's fine, whether whether it's thick, whether it's coily, whether it's wavy, whether it's curly, then you can understand what you need to do for your hair. So when I was looking at the girls on YouTube and seeing all their different textures, I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to have the looser texture hair because looking at the girls with tighter, curly, coily hair, I seen how much of a struggle that it was to maintain, comb, detangle, all that stuff. And I'm like, oh lord. <laughs> but it's okay. My hair is like a 4A, 4B. So it's, it's coily, curly. It's not wavy. It's not any of that. It's not... You know, it's very coily, tight, coily hair. So I, um, to be able to identify my hair, I know what to do with my hair. So I know that I always have to keep it in some type of stretch state. I don't use uh, a blow dryer often at all. I just pretty much either do twist outs or, uh, uh, I haven't done braid in a while because it takes me longer to do that, but either twist, I mainly do twist outs or twist it to where it's stretched for when I do do a protective staff so you just got to make sure because our hair tends to curl up on each other so when it does that um, when it's in its natural state and it starts to shrink up it will do it even more so I have to keep my hair in a stretched state uh, by twisting it overnight and just making sure it's stretched or some people do um, the banding method where they use thread or they use some other type of tool in order to help their hair be stretched without using heat. Um, that brings me to my next point is to use less heat or no heat as possible because that can really you know stop the the growth of your hair if you're constantly using um, heat um, then it will damage your hair. Our ends are the weakest part of our hair so you would just want to make sure that you're maintaining that length as well as what's going growing out of your head so if you're constantly putting heat on it and you're constantly um, straightening it whether blow drying or putting a flat iron to it or whatever then it, it's going to be damaged so you, your hair is not going to either curl anymore or it's just going to keep breaking off so you just got to be very careful of that if you somebody who likes to use heat because you don't want to deal with the the naturalness of your hair then just try to do it um, less a week so if you straighten it like like three times out of the week just try to do it two times and then next time try to do it one time but you would definitely see a difference the less heat that you use on your hair um, I don't use a lot of heat on my hair the most I use a blow dryer is about three times out of the year and that's when I do crochets when I need to corner on my hair um, or that's when I do uh, that's when I straighten my hair but or to do a trim so I do it when I straighten my hair, when I um, trim my hair, and when I do 
a crochet hairstyle. That's the only time I blow dry my hair. And then when I use a flat iron is when I, at the end of the year when I actually straighten my hair, which is one time a year. So I don't use heat that much. Um, actually, I love the naturalness of my hair. I love the fullness, the bigness, and everything. So even when I put my hair up in a protective style, I love to put it in a style where it's full and it looks more natural on the natural side than you know anything else so I love to do that um, so yeah try to use as less heat as possible when it comes to your natural hair because that will save your hair so much damage and so much breakage and you would definitely see a difference your hair would start to flourish like for real flourish um, my next tip is moisture of course no matter what type of hair texture we have, your hair is going to always need moisture. It's just determined how much we need, depending on our hair type, um, and how little we need. Um, the best thing I can say to do is, of course, deep condition. Um, and then also do the lock method. So the lock method is LOC or LCO or uh, LO or L. Did I say the right or all OCL or however you want to do it as long as it's the lock method and that is liquid oil conditioner or conditioner oil liquid or oil conditioner liquid or not conditioner cream whatever anything that's going to uh, moisturize your hair so I mainly use water which is always good some people use uh, rose water um, and some people use aloe vera juice something that has water um, that is, that is water soluble, if I said that right. But water is always good for your hair. Um, and then I, you can always always use an oil with it because it helps seal in the moisture. So that's anything from castor oil, olive oil, um, jojoba oil, argan oil, um, coconut oil, um, Moroccan oil. It, it's a lot of different oils out there that you can use to help seal the moisture in your hair. Um, and then the creams, I don't have a, sp a specific cream that you can actually use, but I like to use butters. They're more heavier for my hair. It literally locks in the moisture. I the next thing that we do need to learn in our natural hair journey, hair growth journey, is to have patience. Um, even if you're starting off from a fade, like you need to have patience and to just embrace every stage that your hair goes through. Um, so that way you won't be looking for a growth every single second because uh, we go to like these different hair growth secrets and um, pills and all this stuff. I've never taken pills for hair growth because I'm not a pill taker. I will not be consistent with it. I will miss a day or two or a week and then I will just drop off from doing it. So I don't like taking pills because I know I will not stick to it. I've heard different things about about it as far as it giving you acne and all this other stuff. So I'm just like, I'm not just gonna fool with it all around. Like, ain't nobody got time for that, okay? Um, so yeah, just to be patient because even here's a little science that I at least know about is our hair grows four to six inches a year, a year. So you can't expect four to six inches in two months, three months. Four months our hair grows four to six inches a year and that's I believe that's including the trims that we do um, on our hair so yeah that's why we do need patience when it comes to actually growing our natural hair out because it's not gonna speed up because we want it to um, there is like I said all the all the things that I'm telling you now is to keep your hair um, growing so you can see the length of your hair. So this is something that I think that a lot of us naturals are a little bit afraid of or a little bit unknowledgeable of, uh, which is trimming. Trimming our natural hair is very, very important. I know we want to see the length. I know we want to see it grow, but you have to be wise about actually trimming your hair. If you're not getting it professionally done and you're going to do it yourself, then um, just be more knowledgeable about your hair. So the best ways that I can tell that my hair needs trimming is I would, uh, whenever I am detangling it, I will feel knots and I won't be able to get the comb like towards the end of it when I'm combing it, it'll get stuck. It won't go all the way through. Even when I actually comb through it and detangle it, it still gets stuck. And then I also feel like the knots in it and then you can even sometimes see the split ends at the end so you know, okay, hey, my hair definitely needs trimming. So you just gotta pay more attention to your hair. 
Um, you don't need a schedule to say, okay, I'm going to trim my hair every six weeks or every eight weeks or every three months. You pretty much have to pay attention to your hair. So if you, once you do, if you're somebody like me who likes to wear your hair in protective styles, once you take it down, just go ahead and feel your ends, look at your ends, all that, examine them so that way you will know and you may just need a dusting where you're taking not even an eighth of an inch off or whatever. Um, but just being knowledgeable of what your hair is doing and that it's that you're not waiting too long to where you need like inches cut off because you waited too long you just want to keep the length so we just have to stop being scared like living in fear that if we cut our trim our hair then um, we trim it off our actual length that's not true that's very far from the truth your hair is going to need trimming it just is just um <clears throat> So yeah, just trim as needed. Don't trim on a schedule because if you trim on a schedule, then you will be cutting off your hair. Uh, especially natural women, you don't need to, natural hair women, you don't need to cut your hair off every six weeks. Unless you get like a relaxer or something, then you probably would because it's more prone to breakage damage and your cuticles are pretty much open to, you know, everything that's coming its way. So it, it's not strong enough to withstand everything. Um, so yeah. Be more knowledgeable of your trims, understand your hair, look at your hair, examine your hair, feel your hair, be one with the hair. <laughs> so that way you would know, okay, I do need to trim. And don't go just being scissor happy and, and don't be too skippy with it. If you see what needs to come off, then go ahead and clip that off. Also, when you like blow dry it or when you um, comb it out um, and stretch your hair, you'll be able to see like hold your hair up to your hand to see if you see like any see-through areas that are not you know thick going all the way down like the rest of your hair and then that's how you also know hey I need to trim it or even if it's looking raggedy and it's like splitting and going all these other ways you need a trim okay trim your hair when needed okay um next thing is dyeing your hair okay I'm not totally against dyeing your hair because I have dyed my hair. I just recently dyed my hair black, like dark black, dark black. <laughs> what is that? I just recently dyed my hair black. Um, and y'all probably like, girl, it was already black. But it was starting to be like an ashy, dark brown, like, yeah. So I dyed it myself with a uh, cream of nature um, black dye. <laughs> it was jet black. But I dyed it myself. Um, and I'm not a... I'm not a stickler for that either. It's just I won't go no higher than a dark brown. So I, my hair has been like a copper penny brown and then it's been black. Those are the only two colors that it's ever been. I went from copper penny brown to black and then I just recently dyed it black again. So and that's been over the 10 years. The last time I dyed my hair was three years ago. So I really don't dye my hair like that. Um, because I do wear protective styles that does have color, so I don't have to get, you know, color happy with my own natural hair. Um, I love black. I love the color. I love the healthiness that it gives it, the shininess and all that. So, I'm going to be sticking to black. Um, but as far as like trying all these different new colors, pinks, blues, platinum, blondes, uh, reds, that those type of colors require bleaching and all of that and that can be very damaging especially if you do it often like every three months and you constantly doing it like it may not seem like a lot but it is a, a toe on your hair especially if you're straightening it, straightening it as well um, just to get the color in it so yeah dyeing can definitely be it can act like a relaxer so it can damage your ends it can damage your hair follicles and it can cause your hair to be um uh dye damaged <laughs> instead of heat damage it'll be dye damaged um but your hair ultimately will be straight for the most part or your curl won't be the same and also you will have to switch up your um your hair regimen so whatever you was doing before before if your hair was like black or if it was um in its regular in its virgin state then you're gonna have to switch it up to uh, give your hair more protein give your hair more moisture so that way it won't break off and dry out and yeah then you'll have damaged broken off hair other things that can that can contribute to your hair um, not growing or not being in this full fullness or thickness which is you know not getting enough sleep which 
I know moms that have kids and all of that, including myself, I need to preach to the choir because I do not get enough sleep at all. So sometimes that does take a toll on my hair and I notice like my hair would be shedding a little bit more and I need to get more sleep. Even with um, drinking water, it's the same way you have to make sure that you're hydrated because like I said, your hair will be very thirsty. Um, so drinking enough water a day, they say eight glasses, I believe that is, either eight ounces, no, <laughs> eight glasses a day. Um, I'm not uh, following that rule, but uh, I tried, I'm gonna try this year, that will be my New Year's resolution is to drink more water because I haven't been doing that. And that tends to take a toll on my hair too as far as shedding. Um, there was a year um, in 2016, I my hair had been through its worst uh, stressor ever because 20, uh, before that I was a stay at home mom so I had more time to care for my hair and do all these other things. But then once I got my job in 2016 and we moved to a new house in 2016, uh, my dad died in 2016. Um, and it was something else. We moved, got a job, my dad passed away. There was so much, so many things that, that shifted and some was in a good way, some was in a bad way, but my body didn't adjust to it. So it took a toll on my hair and I put my hair in some goddess locks for the first time. And then when I took them out, y'all, no lie, my hair was damaged. Like it shed so much. Um, I pretty much had to do another transition because of the stress that my hair was in. And plus it was weight and everything from the goddess lock. So yeah, it was a whole mess. So once I took those out, my hair was like, it looked like it was heat damaged. Uh, when I say heat damaged, it was like, um, my hair was thick here and it like stopped here and then the rest of it was like strings of hair like I was like oh my god so I had to transition my hair all over again so I would have literally um, been at probably the same width as my daughter's by now if I wouldn't have to transition all over again in 2016 so I had still about a good 12 inches of um, healthy natural hair but then I had like at least I had like at least eight of damaged hair when I say damaged y'all I couldn't put it in no twist out I couldn't put it in nothing to make it look full make it look anything um so what I did was is I just kept uh I did the, the chop as I did my protective style so I protective style that whole year um and I just kept chopping it off I cut off for the first for the for that first time when I washed my hair and took it out of the locks and I seen how damaged it was and how thin it was, it was like thick and then thin. It was horrible. But I ended up cutting um, about four inches off that time and then I washed deep conditioning and all that and then I put it up in a protective style. Um, and then once I took it out that protective style, I cut some more and pretty much did that up in, for the whole year. Um, and it, of course it got back to its fullness and thickness, but y'all, stressing is not good for your body. Um, it takes a toll. I mean, and your hair would definitely let you know, like, hey, <laughs> I'm giving you a visible sign that you need to stop, you know, take a breather and take care of you. So you definitely have to do that. Time. So let's recap. The first thing I said is that you need to find a hair inspiration, inspiration, motivation, YouTuber or YouTubers that um, are that have the same goals or had the same goals as you and have accomplished those goals. Um, second thing, you need to identify your hair. So you need to know like what type of hair that you have. Is it coily? Is it curly? Is it wavy? Is it thick? Is it fine? And then you would know how to care for your hair. You would know if you can wash your hair in sections, if you can wash your hair just out and, you know, all over your head. Um, I wash my hair in sections because that's what work, that's what works for me. I can actually detangle better because I'm able to get every strand within in sections and I don't have to worry about 
missing hair um that's another hair tip you just gotta know your hair y'all know your hair talk to it okay be like hey hair what you doing today you trying to get dry no I ain't having that you trying to get curly and, and coily all up on each other no let me stretch you out okay you need to be detangled let me comb you let me finger out thank you okay so another tip is to finger detangle y'all this is key it absolutely helps me and my hair journey. So whenever you take your hair out of a protective style or even if it's out like this, just make sure you section your hair off and finger detangle. So you're pretty much taking your water and conditioner, spreading it on the section and you're just pulling apart your hair to make sure it's not matted or anything like that. And then you're pulling it down with your fingers and then you're just pulling whatever shit out hair comes out of um, that section. Um, that keeps the shedding down that keeps the breakage down because you're not actually using a tool you're actually filling your hair and you're feeling what's going on with your hair so um finger detangling is so key it's it's something that i have learned from the guru youtubers that were um starting up the hair journey back in the day on youtube finger detangling definitely helps um minimal shedding um, you can feel your knots and um, everything that's going on in your hair and you can definitely stop breakage um, from doing that. So, But I do still use a wide tooth comb so once I'm done using my fingers to finger detangle like pulling apart and pulling out the shit hair then I will go in and use a wide tooth comb to get out the rest of it like if there's any gunked up dirt or anything lint then that usually helps get that out in um, yeah, so finger detangling will be a lifesaver for your hair. It helps your hair uh, grow because it's not taking out any excessive hairs. Um, you are more gentle with your hands than you are with a comb, because with a comb you're just raking through and trying to, because you can't, you can't physically feel it with your fingers, with your hands. So when you're doing like this, you're feeling everything that's going on in your hair. You're like, oh, wait, it's not right there. So you can pull it apart and do it with your fingers like that and pull it down. But when you got a comb, you just comb it through because you're not, you're not it, literally feeling it with your fingers. So finger detangle is key. Um, I do it with all my girls. I do it with me and it's a lifesaver. It definitely takes time and patience, but it's a lifesaver for your hair. Um, this, the last thing I want to say that will definitely help you guys in your hair growth, natural hair growth journey is to protective style. Yes, um, for the past year, all of 2018, I wore nothing but protective styles and it wasn't, you know, because I wanted my hair to grow and flourish. When I say protective styles, I added weave to my hair and just kept it out of the way. It was because I had no time to do my hair. So I, it was like happenstance. It, it just happened that way. Um, I was able to put my hair protective styles throughout the whole year. So every two, even three months, I would take my hair down um, and you know do the regular wash and deep conditioning and then I would give it a breather for like a few days whenever I would have time to do my next protective style and then I would put in whether it's braids, locks, twists, or crochets um, I would do that. So I have done a lot of protective styling but you don't have to do what I do if you're not a braider or a twister or anything like that you can do uh, buns, you can do fake ponytails, you can Put your hair in a high bun, middle bun, low bun, um, whatever it is protecting your ends because that's what it's all about. So protective styles will definitely help your hair growth journey because you're keeping your hands out of your hair. If you're somebody who likes to rub and always touch and do a hair every two days and one day, that will put a lot of stress on your hair and cause your hair to also break and eventually, you know, come out. So you want to keep your hands out of your hair. They call that HIA. H-I-H, hands and hair syndrome. Keep your hands out of your head. Do a style, leave it alone for a week and then redo it if you're not somebody who likes long-term hair and you like to feel, touch, and see your hair. Do a style um, of, um, you know, feet and braids or something like that, but I like long-term long because I have three girls, so keep your hands out of your head. Um, all right, so I think that is it. My battery and memory card is about to die, so I'm going to end this video right here. If I haven't asked 
answer all your questions then just don't forget to comment below and ask me whatever it is that I haven't um, answered in this video like comment subscribe share and I will catch you guys in the next video peace love hair grease on that note bye